Bonjour tout le monde! Life in France has a lot going for it, and when you move here, you're going to notice there are a bunch of things you need to get used to as you settle into a French routine and adapt to French life. Now, some aspects of daily life in France require specific items that I personally had no experience with or just had never considered before. So let's get into seven items I had never owned before moving to France. All right, so please note that some of the items I'm going to mention here, they are culturally French, and others are just random things that I, Diane, personally never owned back in the U.S. before getting married to a French guy and moving to France. So they might exist in the U.S. or other countries, but they were just new to me. So with that, off we go into number one, which is an electric kettle. Now, the Brits out there, and probably the Australians and a bunch of others, are listening to this and thinking, what the heck? No electric kettle? And it's true. I never owned an electric kettle before moving to France. And as a non-tea drinker, I didn't think I'd have much use for one in my life. And it would just collect dust on the counter. But oh, how wrong I was and how times have changed because I actually use mine here every single day. Now, to be clear, Electric kettles do exist in the U.S. and people have them, they know what they are, they're not foreign, but they're just not as popular in the United States as they are in France and other areas. So they're definitely more common in Europe, especially here in France. Now, a lot of Americans boil water via a regular kettle, you know, the manual way that you heat up on the stove and it whistles, that sort of thing. But electric kettles are way more mainstream in France. Everyone has one. And I personally love them for heating up water, um, making my morning coffee, all kinds of things. And the water heats up quite quickly. So you can get a head start on that boiling process for pasta or whatever else you're making. And they're super convenient. And truth be told, if I ever moved back to the U.S., I would definitely get one. Once you have one, you can't go back. Okay, number two, a bread bag. Now, as you know, baguettes are a staple of everyday French life, or at least bread of some sort. And going to the bakery, which is la boulangerie, it's not a stereotype about the French. French people love their bread. Now, if one night you don't finish your bread, you have to put it somewhere overnight. So to store it until that next meal, that's where the handy dandy bread bag or some sort of bread receptacle comes into play. Except at first, I thought these things were trash cans, and I have a funny but embarrassing story for you. Years ago, I was staying with a friend, and uh, one morning after using the bathroom, I had some trash to dispose of, but there was no trash can in the bathroom. I looked around, there was nothing, so I took my used uh, tissue that I'd blown my nose in, Q-tips, um, some cotton rounds for cleaning your face and everything, and I think even a wrapped up tampon applicator. <laughs> down to the kitchen to find what I thought was a trash can there. Yeah, you, uh, you see where this is going. And I saw like, you know, a cloth bag hanging from the back of one of the cabinet handles. And it made sense. I thought that was the garbage can. So naturally you do what you do. I put my trash in the trash can, you know, in the bottom, I saw a plastic bag. I saw a piece of bread. I figured it was trash. And then I sat down at the table with his family, with my coffee. And 10 minutes later, his dad comes over to me with the trash in his hands with a really, really bad expression on his face saying, what is this? And holding up like all my trash. I was mortified. I turned totally red. You know, he fished out my used Q-tips and all that. And I explained, oh, but that's the garbage can. I'm so sorry. Was it not? And he explained, no, that's the bread bag. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, now in my house here, I have a bread drawer in my kitchen for all of our bread needs. It's very handy. I've come to use it and love it. It's not the trash can. So if you're in a French person's house and you're looking for the trash, always ask first. You know, any type of cloth bag hanging from the back of a door or from a cabinet handle, it's most likely not a garbage can. And you know it's a bread bag because it's a cloth bag. Pretty much all bread bags, they are made of some sort of fabric. So steer clear of them and ask for the trash. Okay, number three, nasal spray when you have a cold. I feel like French pharmacies sell tons of nasal spray and related products. I love French pharmacies, and truth be told, I still have no idea what the heck all these nose sprays do. Now, when I personally have a cold, I take some type of cold medicine. Maybe I'm the weirdo, I don't know. The last thing I wanna do when I'm stuffed up is shoot some spray and stuff up my nose, but you know, when in Rome and all, so I've adapted on that front. But I will say there's a lot of talk about cleaning your nose, the serum physiologique here in France. You know, if you have a cold, we'll clean your nose. Here, have you cleaned your nose? Uh, my mother-in-law always says that. Oh, did you, did you use the serum physiologique then? Do you have allergies? Same thing. Did you clean your nose? And I don't think I've heard that 
As much as a tried and true remedy in the US for medical professionals for colds and the like, sinus infections, although, you know, of course we have nasal spray in the US, we know what it is, and people do use it. I just feel like it's prescribed and used a lot more in France. Although I will say I'm a huge fan of neti pots, if you know what those are. I'm not sure if they actually help anything, but it's fun to do, you know, seeing the water coming out of the other nostril. Another popular thing here in France is something called an inhalateur. That's like an inhaler, it's a device where you steam your nasal passages kind of like putting your head over a steaming pot right and you put your face in the thing and with a mix of essential oils it's a great way that French people um, unclog their sinuses in their nose yeah it works okay number four a duvet and square pillows now back in the US my bed always had a comforter on it before I moved to France under that would be the flat sheet and then depending on the season maybe a blanket and it's that sheet maybe the blanket that comes in direct contact with your body but in france bedding's a little different flat sheets are less common and it's that duvet with the duvet cover a sheet you know that comes in contact with the body so generally this is what french people have on their beds i personally am not a fan of duvets and duvet covers i still have a comforter and i have a blanket and a flat sheet and a fitted sheet i am just not good at stuffing the duvet into the duvet cover i find that a little annoying to do definitely not my strong suit so uh, I give Tom that job when it's time to change the sheets but yeah for the most part I use a comforter not a duvet cover and for pillows while they do have the rectangular ones that are most common in the US the most common in France are square pillows so uh, yeah they're really cool they're big they're fluffy yeah I love square pillows that's what I buy now all right and next up number five a pouch style washcloth now I'm hundred percent on team gant de toilette that's what they're called literally a glove not a washcloth you know they use this glove the gant to wash and it's basically it's washcloth material right terry cloth that you put your hand into like a little pouch and it's really convenient and easy to use so unlike washcloths which are just squares right they're easy to drop or or slip the gant looks like this i'll put a picture up here and it stays on your hand and it's really handy to just wash and and take care of things in the shower with the gant de toilette instead of a washcloth so yeah i'm all for it okay number six peanut flavored snack puffs kind of like cheetos but not the cheese ones the peanut ones they're called curly curly snack puffs i never had them before coming to france i don't think they exist stateside you know these peanut flavored cheeto things they sound a little weird right and I, I didn't try them for the first few years i was in france but i was missing out they are so good and as someone who loves peanut butter but I'm not a fan of peanuts for the record. Curlies are something different. You really can't eat just one. They're perfect for snack time or whenever you need a little something, you know, apéro, that sort of thing. And they aren't sweet and they really do taste like light and airy peanuts, but better. And um, they have a little bit of oil on them, so they're not too dry, very addictive, very good and consider yourself warned and definitely try them if you find yourself in a french supermarket i recently did a video on french versus american supermarket differences linked here check that out and with that that wraps up my list and if you like this video be sure to check out my french culture playlist i'll link here for more fun cultural comparisons on my channel and if you're planning on visiting france i have an ebook i'd love for you to check out it'll help you to be more prepared for your trip it is called 75 Beginner France Tips for a Standout Trip. That's linked below too. So with that, let me thank you for being here. Merci, merci beaucoup. And I'll see you next time right back here on We in France. Salut.